Aside from daily routine cleaning that you probably already know to do, such as making your bed in the morning, putting the dishes away, and vacuuming, here are some quick 10 second habits that I feel aren't talked about, but have seriously made my home look and feel cleaner and put together. Some of this may be obvious to you, but I'm here to kindly nag you about it. Check on your produce daily like it's your garden, baby. Your produce is alive, which means it could also die. Once you start seeing your fruits and veg, almost like houseplants, you realize how important it is to take care of them and notice their existence. For herbs, treat them like flowers in a vase. Place them in a glass filled with water and this will keep them fresher for longer. I also line the drawers with a towel, you could also use newspaper, to absorb the moisture and also make it easy to clean any debris that falls to the bottom. It takes like 10 seconds. The night before, I do a quick scan of the produce in the fridge and countertop and it helps me to decide what to eat and cook the next day before it goes bad. When I know I'm about to chop up a bunch of vegetables, I take out a bin to have nearby to throw away any of the food scraps. You can use an over-the-cabinet bin like this to slide the scraps down straight from the cutting board or any bowl or bucket you have on hand. I use the bucket from my Lomi composter, which I later use to turn the food waste into plant-friendly dirt. Having a mini produce waste bin saves trips to and from the trash bin and makes my cooking environment less cluttered. One of the most frustrating things to clean the kitchen is stuck on grease stains. But now I use a splatter screen when I cook to guard 99% of the grease splatters while still allowing the steam to escape. Not to mention, it also protects you from the hot spitting oil burning your skin and leaving blisters. It's made of stainless steel which can be cleaned with soap and water or placed in the dishwasher. Huge thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. I am obsessed with this app and I think anyone who writes in English could benefit from using it. Grammarly is a communication assistance app that can be enabled wherever you type. I spend a lot of time writing for work, whether it's answering emails, drafting proposals, or scripting videos, and it can become overwhelming and stressful when I'm crunched for time. Grammarly has been such a helpful tool for improving my writing so I can communicate correctly and clearly. Grammarly has helped me to write this voiceover, letting me know if I'm engaging or if my delivery is slightly off. In fact, I'm taking notes from what I'm learning using Grammarly and applying it to the words I use in real life social settings. Grammarly has a free version with grammar, spelling, and punctuation suggestions, but upgrading to Grammarly Premium will provide comprehensive suggestions to help you feel confident in any writing you produce with its advanced features. You can download Grammarly for free and easily integrate it into your daily life to boost your productivity and start clearing through your work tasks, especially with the busy holiday season approaching. Work smarter, not harder, and get your work done faster with Grammarly. Sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium at grammarly.com slash Christ. Paper is one of the top culprits for the mess in my home. When you don't deal with incoming paper immediately, it begins to pile up and clutter your home. So when you bring a package or shopping bag into your home, open it right away as if someone just gifted it to you, even if you just bought it for yourself. When you walk in with mail, immediately decide what needs to be tossed or recycled and scroll over important information beforehand. For any action items, you don't have to do it right away, but at least write down the task on your weekly planner so you could do it later. When you buy something, scan the receipt so you can toss it. When you open a new appliance and don't know what to do with the manual because you might need it someday, keep it in a separate binder. It's really up to you how you decide to organize your paper, but it's all about having a plan in place so you know exactly what to do with each kind of paper that enters your home. I used to avoid cleaning the nooks and crannies behind appliances and heavy objects because they were too hard to move and it took too much effort. 
Behold, I introduce you to these sticky pulley wheels. I put these on my espresso machine, my trash bin, and my cat's litter box to easily slide them out and clean behind these areas. They're quiet and smooth, and they make it so much easier to put in those extra 10 seconds to slide out heavy items and clean the nooks and crannies of your home. Do you ever wonder how to store plastic bags you want to reuse? I used to just stuff them in this basket, but it would quickly take up a lot of space. So now whenever I come home with a new plastic bag, I fold it into compact triangles like this. I first flatten the bag onto a table, fold it in half and half again, then fold diagonally back and forth, starting from the bottom of the bag to press out the air. For the handles, I fold diagonally again, then tuck into the fold. This takes up significantly less amount of space and just looks neater overall, and it's ready for me whenever I need to grab a plastic bag to use. Of course, the simplest solution is to bring a reusable bag with you on the go, which is something I'm trying to remember to have with me whenever I go out. I don't know about you, but I shed a lot of hair, especially in the shower, and I've tried so many hair catchers, such as the shower cat, the porcupine, and drain protectors, but either they just didn't work, or they just gave me one more thing I had to clean. So what I found was the simplest method to get rid of shower hair on the walls, aside from shaving my head, is to make it a habit to gather the hair and throw it away after every time I shower. If you're not used to doing this, it's a lot harder done than said, but to be more specific, I will usually comb my hands through my hair after applying conditioner, which will detangle out the loose strands, and I used to rinse it off with my hands, but that quickly clogs up the drain, so now I stick the hair on the wall instead. Then after I'm out of the shower and towel dried, I will collect the hair with my hands or a square toilet paper and throw it away right away. If it helps, have a dedicated mini bin nearby so it's right there and ready for you. Once you've dried yourself off, it's easy to stuff the towel back onto the rack, but what if you put in the extra five seconds of effort to fold it into thirds, then slide it over the back side of the rack with the front side hanging a little longer? This towel arrangement will make your bathroom go from looking like a college dorm to a hotel or spa in just a few seconds. Another option is to use either a towel hook or towel ring, so all you have to do is let the towel drape down, which is still a step up from stuffing the towels on the rack, or worse, leaving it on the bed or on the floor. Normal people may have a basket of hand cloths for guests on the bathroom counter, but I leave out cleaning cloths for myself. So around the sink, if I'm washing my face or brushing my teeth, I will do a quick wipe of any water splatters that inevitably splatter around the sink. Also, if I spill anything such as toothpaste or skincare, I'm making it a habit to wipe that right away because once it hardens, it'll be harder to clean later on. When I do this morning and night, it keeps my bathroom sink well maintained in between proper cleans. Quick tip, quickly tip off any product that you use, whether it's hand soap, hand lotion, or face moisturizer. It's like when you don't correctly close a glue bottle and the glue dries up and then you have to peel it off before you use it. It's kind of like that. Not only does it look messy, but it wastes product and your time trying to get rid of the excess. Another way bottles get dirty is when you touch the outside of the bottle with dirty hands. This is embarrassing to show, but I saved it as an example of what it looks like when I use a product and then close the bottle with the product still on my hands. Now, after I use a product like this, I will wash my hands first, then put the product away. I used to reverse this order for whatever reason. At the end of the day, in the wise words of Hannah Montana, nobody's perfect, and I'd be the last to judge if you don't follow these cleaning habits to a T. But as you can tell, these habits don't take much time or effort, and they actually save you time and effort in the long run. Cleaning habits may be harder to learn than quick fix cleaning hacks, but once these habits are made, they stick, and they truly work. Let me know if you have any cleaning habits of your own that you do every day to share with the rest of us. 